All right, so I finally have time. It's my Saturday, and uh, I'm gonna put this bottom end together. Um, I got this watch pretty clean. This is just uh, kind of like scrubbing it and uh, hose and some some uh, engine bright, you know. <clears throat> so, okay, so one thing about uh, buying bearings these days, bearings are not what they used to be. So when you buy a bearing these days, you gotta make sure you read the uh, description because they try to sell you these aluminum backed bearings and they claim that they're stronger than ever, you know, anything they ever built before. And um, you don't want anything but a steel backed bearing. I would take uh, a steel backed bearing from a manufacturer I don't really know too well than a uh, aluminum bearing. I've, t I've taken apart engines with aluminum bearings and a lot of times they get, uh, they get uh, like beat and they, they widen. Yeah, they take them out and they're like they got really thin, and I'm not I'm not going to use them. They they claim they're stronger, but I don't buy it. So these are pretty good bearings. Uh, that box job. I think they're Mal or I don't know one of those brands. I kind of forget. I threw the outer box away, but it's got these cool grooves, uh, extra grooves uh, for oil and um, steel backed. I think it was the Mal P series, um, which is a really, really good one. So we're just going to put them in now. All right, so I got my engine tech rear main seal. Made a Viton. It's like seven bucks. So I had a couple spots in this crankshaft that didn't look too good. Right here, kind of like starvation of oil. So I brought down them on the machine shop, which I'm lucky enough to live about a quarter mile from a machine shop, and it's a pretty good one. And I just had him um, just polish it for me. These grooves right here are just going to, they're fine. There's nothing high. It's only low, and all it's really going to do is hold extra oil in there for me. So it's been sitting around the shop for a little bit. This isn't a rust. This is just uh, what I put on it to... I didn't have WD-40, so I threw something else on there. So that's not rust. It's just like some uh, liquid wrench or something like that. So anyway, it's going to go in. Okay, doing it again because I spun it. And it's fine. So the caps are dirty. I'm just not going to clean them. I'm going to clean the important spots. And then um, we're just going to put them in. This is about as good as it gets for me. You know, just kind of knock off the dirt. I don't feel like washing them. And then just uh, kind of get them down with a rag, and we're done. So sometimes you can see imprints from the bearing. And um, this is the original bearing. So this thing, uh, it still is in good shape. But they're, they're, run, they're running it pretty hard. You can kind of see that there's a little bit of a wobble right here. But I don't feel it. I can see it. But I'm not, I'm not going to do anything about it because it was running before and it'll still run. The, uh, the people who had this, this, vehicle, this, this truck, this uh, engine here, um, it belonged to the city. 
of, um, I'm not sure which city in, in, in California, but it belonged to a city. And uh, they, they had put in the ram, so it was, uh, you know, in use every day. They had put one of those high performance computers in it. And uh, when I got it, they had taken out the hydraulic push, the hydraulic lifters, and they basically put longer push rods in, and uh, they, they took the spring out of the hydraulic lifter. So they were saying that this, this thing ran like hell, you know, fast. They said it was fast, and they just beat the hell out of it. And um, I can kind of see that when I'm taking it apart. But uh, it doesn't matter, it's still in good shape. These are the bearings, and they're actually in pretty good shape. Um, you don't really see, it's, it hasn't gotten through the top layer yet, so you don't see any copper. I mean, they're a little bit uh, rough because um, it had low oil, but really they're good. So I don't know why, but I tend to keep these old bearings around. Um, see right here, that's where it's kind of wobbly on that on the cap uh, like this must be the thrust side but um, so I keep them around for a while just in case like I run into an engine that you know I don't know why I keep them around but they're good uh, so I just keep them around and then I throw them out after I do another engine so sometimes you run into like Chevy and Ford people who don't quite like Chrysler, the small block, you know, quote unquote small block Chrysler. Um, but one thing I think we have over them is that when you find a Chrysler block, it's all the same. It doesn't matter where you find it. So I can't think of the right word, but you have this step right here. And when you put this cap in, it gets pressed into the block. And what that does is the is it when it's impressed into the block it keeps it from moving sideways and then the bowls keep it keep it from moving off so what i like about this is that you don't need a four bolt main really for this i mean uh, all of them have it the 440s uh you have a four bolt main in like um some of the 340s and the hemi but this is really all you need uh and then if you go you know you're going to like in the power, I guess you need more, but but uh, when the Chevy guys look for a block, they're always looking for the four bolt main, they're always looking for something, you know, you know, it's like it's always out of a Corvette, you know, um, they're always looking for something that's hard to find. And with Chrysler, every single block's the same, they figured it out, they made it right the first time, and they just kept on building them. And that's what's good about it, uh, Chrysler is you don't got to look for that special block like Chevy guys do. Uh, one more thing that's impressive about these uh, these LA blocks and Magnum blocks is they're actually quite large. So it's not really, a, like, you don't really call it, a, you can call it a small block Mopar, but most people refer to it as uh, the LA or the Magnum. <clears throat> but really, it's uh, the 392 Hemi's grandson, right? Uh, I don't know the Hemi's too well from the 50s, but basically this is just like the continuation they use the they, they change the block around and it's basically that so these things are big and um, one time I, I saw one next to a 350 Chevy because this guy had a charger and he was like I was maybe gonna buy his 318 off of him and um, he told me it's under it's under that tarp right there so I picked it up and it was like a, a 350 Chevy and I was like damn and then the other one was right next to it and so I saw a 318 right next to a 350 Chevy and it was like it was like, this is a big block almost, you know what I'm saying? And then uh, the 302 is even smaller. But, don't get me wrong, I actually like 302 for how small it is. I like that it's uh, like a tiny little engine. I just think that's cool. And um, I kind of wish that they would build something that was small like a 302. Uh, for the new the new Chryslers, like if they took the Hemi and made it just you know a pint-sized little thing. Because the thing is, today 
you just have too much horsepower in these in these cars. Like, I know that's kind of crazy for me to say, but people don't know how to uh, drive with 500 horsepower under the hood. And I think you'd be better off building like a 300 cubic inch that uh, just has really good torque and just handles really good for the street. And I'd be more into that, to be honest with you. I think um, that's kind of what I thought the uh, inline six was going to be. If the inline six is going to be like, uh, uh -oh. like the inline six was going to be the uh, the smaller kind of more modern engine with a better power band but then they got rid of the Hemi and they tried to put the, the 3 liter in the Ram 2500 you know it's kind of crazy right but if they would like make a V8 that was like 300 and something I mean you could do the 318 I guess but 300 something cubic inches but really compact it I think that'd be great like the size of a 302 or even smaller like I don't know if you've ever seen the Vulcan engines but the Vulcan engines are in the small Ford from the 90s and they're they're six cylinders and they're at a 60 degree I mean it'd be pretty awesome to just to make that Vulcan an eight cylinder because they're just tiny little engines and I mean like if they if it pumped out like 320 horsepower who cares that's all you need and then have you know, it, it, like for me, bring back a 360. This is like the big block at that point, you know? The 360, I don't care what you say. If they had the Hemi on the showroom floor right now, and then they had just the truck motor, the 360, just like, they're still making the, Hem the 360 Magnum. You can still order it. I think you can. Anyway, but... uh they have the 360 as just the absolute work truck option. I take the 360 because uh, it's just stout. It's 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 sturdier, and that that uh, the Hemi just has too many problems. Okay, so these original bolts, uh, they got some light oil on them. We're just going to reuse them. They look like they're in good shape. So when you're torquing down a crankshaft or kind of anything that's just um, kind of a normal piece like nothing like a new car special part or something like that basically you don't really need to look up the the, the, the order all you really need to know is uh, what the torque spec is because what you do is you just basically go from the center outward you don't want to go from the uh, outside in you can probably crack a crankshaft or put really a lot of stress on it you know so you just go from the center out you just fan out the same thing for heads um, you don't really need to look it up you just need to know what spec to put it at
Okay, so it's all torqued down. Torqued down with my old Husky. Uh, the 85, but I put an extra 5 on it because it's single. old. <clears throat> um, pistons aren't ready yet, so they're all dirty and I gotta clean them up and stuff like that. So we're not gonna put them in right now. So that's about it. It's in there. It uh, turns nice and easy. So we're all done with that. So we're going to do that other stuff in a bit, but I got other things to do right now. So um, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you uh, stay tuned to see this thing fire up, you know, down the road and all that stuff. So, uh, all right, have a good day. Okay, I'm back. I got one more thing I got to do. My torque wrench is like really old and it's been dropped and I think it may have even been stolen and replaced. So I went to the store and I got me a torque wrench. I went to um, O'Reilly's and I'm just renting one for a second. And we are going to check my work. Okay, so that was 85. 86, 87, 88, 89, 90. Let's just check it right here. <clears throat> okay, let's see. Okay, we're a little bit off. Now, a torque wrench, you never want to use a breaker bar on a torque wrench, or for a torque wrench. And what happens here is this. Um, when you torque it down, the click is not just an indication. The click is actually a pivot and it relieves pressure. Okay? So when it relieves pressure, you're actually locking your bolt. Because the threads of the bolt. Okay, so you're twisting here right but the threads are way down here so you're actually twisting this whole bolt and if you were used a breaker bar it would simply have a swing motion so what happens is when you twist it tighten it and it locks you're actually kind of like locking the threads in place because it kind of like jolts the bolt and the bolt stops moving uh, suddenly so it actually becomes like a lock so you never want to damn that thing's way off you never want to uh, use a breaker bar or even those bars that Chrysler invented that have uh, it's basically a breaker bar with a needle and a, uh, a measurement that is basically just to check your work. You want to just be able to see if, you know, like, if you're not sure what, um, what torque you want to be at or something like that. And maybe you're testing it. And then you say, yes, we're going to use uh, 80 pounds of foot pressure, uh, foot pounds right there. And then you end up going back and, um, using an actual torque wrench. These little bolts, I don't really want to put that much pressure on. We're going to go down to 85. That would suck to break one of these buttons. Okay, so I got to get a new, new breaker bar, or a new, <laughs> I got to get a new uh, torque wrench, which kind of sucks didn't really want to have to do that okay so um, I'm gonna get this thing back together in a little bit um, I got some vacation coming up so I get some more work done thanks for watching and uh, please subscribe so I can start making some money okay take it easy